Hello everyone, this is Katarzyna Leska and today I would like to talk to you about Krita. Uh, I'm planning to do uh, a couple or more tutorials on Krita, um, sort of ones that you can just um, watch and maybe get more familiar with the program so that you um, don't feel so overwhelmed with the majority of um, or the multitude of, of options that it um, gives you because it can be overwhelming at first. So, um, well, I'm just going to open Krita and I'm going to go through all the things that you might want to know when you are first approaching Krita. Uh, first, what you need to know is that what you're seeing right now is not going to, um, you're not going to see what you're seeing right now because I've already customized my Krita. Um, but I'm going to show you how to change things. So no matter what I have on the screen right now, you can change instantly when you start working with Krita. First thing that I would like to show you is how to open your documents and um, how to work with tabs and subwindows, what dockers and toolbars are, and how to change them. So, first thing is I'm going to tell you about how to open a file, because we're also going to need it for further presentation. So you just click File, um, New, and uh, this is what pops up. Um, you can, of course, choose from a variety of um, different um, comic templates and design templates, etc. But I'm just going to create a simple document canvas that you can work from. So here you can name it. Let's say we'll name it uh, first one. Just because I'm, I really can't think of anything else. Um, you can choose the image file either from the predefined image sizes, or um, you can create your own. So you can put whatever you want here, however many pixels, centimeters inches, whatever you need. Um, you can choose a resolution and um, you can choose predefined, um, safe, you can sorry, you can save it as a predefined, predefined size. So if you created this size for instance and you love it and you work with it a lot, you can just save it here. Um, there is a model here, model color, uh, so you can go from grayscale, RGB, etc, etc. Depth of the color model and a profile. Different kinds of profiles here to choose from. Um, here you can choose what content of your image is going to be at first. So you can choose image background, image background opacity, um, whether you want background to be your first layer, especially if you have more layers. I chose to have two, so when I open it, it's probably going to be background at the bottom and then first layer on top, but that's not something we're going to, uh, you know, trouble ourselves with right now. So here you can choose whatever you want, however big your image you want to have. Okay, so let's cl click create. And this is what happens. Um, you can open at first, actually this is, um, this right now looks the way Krita is at first. I'm, I'm talking about the windows and the way they open. Um, because if you open a new one, another one, or whichever one, you can just have a file that you want to open. So you open another one, it will open as a tab window. So you can switch between the windows, but you cannot drag them so that you have like two windows, one next to the other. You can't do that. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it, because I personally don't like this way of working. It's a little weird for me, um, especially that I sometimes use um, new window option and I see my file in two different zooms um, uh, so I have one window open for one um, view and the other for like a very close up big close up so that I can paint details so if you want to change that if you don't like this way of working go to settings go to configure Krita general window and change tabs to sub windows Hit OK, and this is what happens. Now you have two different windows working along, uh, alongside. You can move them, you can stretch them, um, and generally this is this is the way I prefer to work. I, I, I like my windows open like that. You can always open one of them in full view, but then you can downsize it and use another one. You can also switch between them. Oh, this is sorry. Um, I think it's um, Control Tab. Um, 
and then you can just switch between those windows. Um, control tab again. There you go. Um, all right. So those are the windows. Um, but now let's look at the workspace. In Krita, you can totally manage your workspace. So you have a toolbar at the top that's called, well, half of it, or more than half of it, is called brushes and stuff. And the other part is called uh, file. Um, also, you have some dockers right over here on the right and uh, at the bottom. Sorry for the icons. Later on, we're going to cover uh, or in another tutorial we're going to cover brushes, so I'm going to show you how to create your own brushes and you have an ability to um, create your own icons. So this is why they look so strange. These ones are the uh, basic ones uh, provided by Krita, so they're pretty <laughs> minor, a little bit wacky. Um, so those are the dockers. You can basically move the toolbar and you can move the dockers uh, the toolbar is currently locked. I can unlock it and move things around. So if I like this here or here for some reason, I can change it. But uh, here, where is the? I generally like it this way, um, and I can lock it back. Um, same thing with the dockers. I can just grab them and move them around. I can move it here. I can make it smaller or thinner. Um, I can move this thing and create a separate... Oops, this one is quite hard. You have to... And there. So now you have like kind of three different dockers. The dockers can be um, overlapping like that so that you have them in tabs like this. Um, you can completely close them if you don't like them, like for example, I don't need channels really, so I'm just going to close them. Um, and the reference image I can put back here. So you can just basically move around dockers and play with them. You can also turn them all off, but you can also turn them on. To do that, you have to go right over here and choose whichever dockers you need. You can choose, for instance, colors layers. Uh, some people prefer to work with that kind of color um, picker. And um, so you can basically choose your colors like that. You can put this color selector, that's not very comfortable, but um, over here so that you can see the whole color selector on the top, etc., etc. Uh, you can also turn all of them off because, um, well, let's say you just want to have all of this free. Um, same thing with these toolbars. You can just turn them off. Again, settings, toolbar shown, file, and brushes and stuff. The only annoying thing is you cannot like just go to settings and turn them off. Click, click. You have to click it and go again <laughs> and click it again. Um, and so, so it's kind of, um, that's a little annoying, but that's just a small thing. You don't really play with these things that often. Um, all right. But one thing you can do as well is save the workspace and create many different kinds of workspace with different toolbars or different positions of toolbars right over here. There's this little icon here choose workspace, you click on it and you see that you have a lot of different workspaces that you can choose from. These are the default ones provided by Krita. So you just you know, see what they are. Something happened here. Ooh, now this moved here, funnily enough, because it's a different workspace. You can also um, choose where you want things in the file and brushes and stuff. I'm going to show you that in a second. But over here, you can all kinds of different workspaces that you can use and also save. To save it, you just have to go here, save it under a new name, and let's say uh, example. Example, save. And example, 
example, <laughs> um, it actually saved twice. So if we go to Navigator and then Example again, we're back to the one we like. We can always configure this as well. If someone's is interested, you go into Configure Toolbars. And over here, whether it's File or Brushes and Stuff, you can choose to add um, whichever option fits you. For example, you'd like to have the freehand oh, oh, let's go file. freehand brush because you don't like to constantly go to tools. There's the freehand oh I can't find it. Freehand path tool. That's just trying to find it again. Freehand Oh, interesting, interesting. I can't find it here now. Um, should be here. Either way, I'm just going to add it here. Apply. And there it is. Oh, I already added it. That's why I was here. Sorry. Okay. So, when I click it, I can paint with a freehand brush. If I click freehand path tool, I can work with freehand path tool that's also you can find it here in the toolbox. You can also configure what Krita looks like. So if you don't like the dark colors, you can change themes. You go to settings again, and you can choose from Krita settings. So let's say we want a Krita bright. Goes bright. Or themes. A blender, so it, I'm assuming it looks like a blender interface. Um, create a neutral, same thing. I, I personally prefer the dark one. Um, funnily enough, you can also choose separately what your background looks like. So you can choose to go to configure Krita in the window. You can choose your background. So let's say very bright pink for some reason. Um, just to make a point to open it and close it, fortunately. Um, <laughs> and you can, by going again, here you can even choose, like let's say you want penguins <laughs> in your background. Okay. You can have penguins in the background. Um, <laughs> I personally think it's very distracting. I could never work like that. But, you know, there are different people. Some people just need a lot of fuss going on. If you're one of those people, you can change it. I'm going to go back to my... Um, I'm just going to choose it from these. I think it was that one. Or that one. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Configure Krita window. You have to clear this one. Okay. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you like the video, please like, share, or subscribe. And see you next time.